Hey, welcome back to the channel. Last video was out with the ugly. This one, it's in with the pretty. We're gonna pick up where we left off and start assembling the full floor, trunk, and new frame rails on the modified frame jig. Show you how easy it is to wheel that back under in a small garage without the aid of a lift and uh, have extreme confidence to know that panels are zeroed in to the proper locations. We'll test fitment, make some adjustments, and at the end of the video, we'll have a little bit of lessons learned and a couple nuggets of information. Please stick around to the end, check it out. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe. It helps YouTube get my content out there for others to find. Let's have some fun. Okay, update time. Show you where I'm at. Not much left down below. Uh, rolling the floor out worked famously. You can see here I have the outer wheel tub simply set in place. Nice fitment there. Everything's been cleaned up. The remnants of the tail panel have been cleaned up off the quarters. In around the inner quarter, that flange that accepts the wheel tubs has been cleaned up both layers of tub are off that flange i can ready that for accepting the new tub combination here i'm showing you how i support the back half of the car onto the outer rails of the frame jig before i cut those rails i added a vertical support that post that's snug up against the underside of the rocker that combined with that uh, tacked in piece that located the rear quarter that's still there so between that vertical support and the new post on the remnant of that rail plenty strong to support what little weight there is uh, remaining in the body shell i had this extra piece of uh, cross tube lying around so while i'm reefing on the car i just thought it smart to lay it across i have a couple old hinges on both sides with clamps just to provide a little extra rigidity so that uh, stays in place nothing's moved uh, rock solid with the car raised up that afforded me the ability to stand inside the passenger compartment easy working easy access to finally remove the inner front dash giving me clean clear access to the underside of the lower cowl panel i'll be able to clean that up very easily with that easy access you can see my repair here from the previous video that corner portion of the inner lower cowl on both sides good penetration on those welds the remainder of that inner lower cowl panel is as good and as solid as the outer side no pitting at all just very light surface rust uh, once that's cleaned up it'll be bright shiny metal i can prep it and seal it paint it and it's good for another 50 years with that easy access you can see my new flush firewall that 14 gauge sheet secured to the remnants of the tow boards firewall and the tunnel all right moving forward new full floor assembly time brand new frame rails sitting in place on the frame jig locked into place there's no guesswork with these frame rails there's one spot they can go in one spot only those pins are in the factory reference locations verified from the original car the frame rail sits in on that locking pin and is resting in the saddle at the rear leaf spring perch there is no wiggle room they're in place i'm going to start from the front of the vehicle back and set my full floor on the supports where the front subframe clip in those are the rear hole locations for the front sub that are underneath the seat this front portion of the frame rail with these two side flanges in the bottom butt up against this torque box area of the full floor okay i did do an initial mock-up and the floor needs to come back further why because these flanges aren't bang on uh, 
They're quite sloppy in the stamp, but that's okay because all I need to do with my hammer and dolly is flatten those out a bit. So I can massage these back, trial and error and fitting until I can slide the full floor back far enough up against that, that support so that my bolt hole lines up perfectly over top of my reference. Massaging those frame flanges was just the ticket. You can see here my front supports that those bolt holes line up famously. They're snug against the frame rails. Okay, so I know that the floor is 90% in the right location. What's gonna give me 100% a surety, because the trunk floor does go on first. This fits over top of the trunk floor, but I don't wanna fight the trunk floor in order to properly line up my full floor. So I'm starting from the full floor back. And this is where the beauty of my bastardized frame jig is gonna reveal itself. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to wheel this in. The only height difference between the floor jig and the car jig, larger wheels on the floor portion of the jig. So it's just enough differential to get the front of the floor up above the rockers, which slope into the side. So it doesn't have to get up that high before it's into that relief and rolls right in. Check it out. Take you around to the inside. Well, I'm happy with the way that worked out. Uh, you could say proof of concept it worked. Okay, so the beauty of having the frame jig integral to begin with, now when I go to put it back, where I cut these cross tubes, uh, I can clamp them together at all six points and I know the inner structure and the new floor is located exactly where it needs to be okay so now all i have to do is raise the outer jig up flush with the inner and i know the floor is positioned perfectly okay let's raise it up and see how the floorboard fits against the firewall well this gets filed in the instant gratification file uh, i'll show you why just to recap, frame rails are aligned, clamped in place, elevation, centered, extreme confidence to know that everything is in the right location. First off, lessons learned. What would I do differently knowing what I know now with these inner frame rails? Well, as much as I pride myself on pre-planning, I ran into one snag and that was related to having these screw jacks on the outside of the inner frame and my, my desire to put the rail underneath that support for the frame rail I didn't leave myself a lot of tolerance so you see here what I've had to do and and that support that's under the rocker uh, because the rail is there I fought that tolerance and then with the um, screw jack on the outside of the frame when I went to push it in I had a, I had trouble clearing the turnbuckle on the rail because it was tight to that frame when I was pulling it out all I did was remove the screw and because the body was high I cleared the turnbuckle without issue but when I'm going in in reverse with the body lower and the inside rails higher that turnbuckle became a point of conflict so I fought it a bit so I had to pull it back out and trim that support as much as I could 
to squeeze that turnbuckle past it. Was I able to do it? Yep. Um, but it, I just didn't want to pretend that it went in smoothly. I just had to refine it a bit. But now that it's in, you know, here, extreme confidence. That is where it was, period. No second guessing, All right? So for a guy who doesn't do this full time, day in, day out, you need to know these things, that it's in right. Lovely fit. Look at that. That corner against the, the other lip, perfect. That corner, perfect. Tolerances in my, um, against the rocker panels, awesome. Okay. First test fit, a little slop around the tunnel, to be expected. Am I overly concerned about that? No, a little hammer and dolly action. I can massage those two surfaces so that they line up a lot better. But more importantly, when I modify the tunnel, I'll be raising it. So I'm gonna rework this area anyway. So really the most key parts are the tolerances along the toe boards there and the frame rails. Here's my bolt for the subframe, perfectly lined up. Jig, perfectly lined up. That's called extreme confidence. I don't even have to second guess it or worry about it. Everything is where it should be. And now that the floor is in place, I can step back, admire my handiwork. And like I said earlier, instant gratification. Been staring at rust for so long and to see the final brand new full floor up against beautiful new rockers, hey, it puts a smile on a guy's face. I'm just checking all the various tolerances to see if uh, they're bang on and you can see back here at the rear of the passenger floorboard where it comes up you see the bracket where the seat goes in so this is the torque box in behind that's where the frame rail starts you can see here it's a little high I have some flexibility to push down but the bottom of the floor isn't lined up with the bottom of the rocker panel either so it's telling me that needs to come down. That side's a little better. Um, well, actually a lot better, uh, but this side's a little high. And when I crawled underneath to look at the frame rail, that same flange that was limiting my ability to push the floor back is a little high and limiting my ability to push the floor down. So when I take this off, I'll be flattening that flange at the top of the frame rail as well. And if I didn't have the ability to reference the floor, to know that the floor is in the right location, I'd be second guessing those decisions. And I'd, I might be trusting that frame rail and welding to it, and then fighting tolerances and problems from that point on. So that's the beauty of having some confidence to know what's supposed to be where, so you know what to modify and what's correct. Okay, I'm underneath the driver's side, looking at the frame rail. I flattened out that top flange on both sides, on both rails, and you can see now with the floor sitting in place, that nice snug fit along the entire curve of the frame rail. That's where it spreads out to accept the trunk that slips underneath it, but that was the, the missing piece. That tolerance now is perfect, snug all along that top edge. It dropped it down probably a quarter of an inch, eighth, eighth to a quarter, and it's money. Haven't screwed through the floor into the frame rail to lock it in position as of yet because it was sitting high. So I think it warrants a second test fit. So now that the back is fitting nice and lowered and snug along the frame rail. Uh, this side of the floor I think was a little proud as well because that bolt wasn't perfectly centered. It was a little off. The floor had to be pushed towards the rocker a little bit and the flange was tipped out a little too far. So I took the hammer and dolly and I brought that edge in a bit along the entire length just to give me some wiggle room so that I could center over my reference point. Those sub frame mounting bolts are key and I didn't want it, I wanted the proper tolerance. I needed that bolt to be in the center. I'm gonna massage the front tunnel a bit too. I'm gonna take a few measurements, make some assumptions, see if I can um, 
maneuver that into a little better fitment before I roll the floor under one last time to really reference the locations and then move on to the trunk. Okay, we're back. Cars leveled out, zeroed out on the frame jig, front to back, side to side. And it's the second test fit of the full floor. And actually the first test fit with the trunk and the tail panel, everything in place. And I must say it's fitting famously. I did a little hammer and dolly action off the car just to massage that tunnel based on some crude measurements. And already this side is fitting very, very well. The passenger side top corner is a little out in the bottom corner. So next time I take it out, I'll, I'll massage it a bit. Uh, but we're zeroing in very, very well. So you hear and see all this hate online for Dynacorn. AMD's the best, AMD's the best. I'm not disputing that, I don't have AMD. But I can tell you in, with all certainty, this is a full Dynacorn assembly, floor, trunk pan, frame rails, all Dynacorn, and it is fitting famously. Let's take you around to the trunk, have a look. Tail panel fit in roughly. I haven't spent a lot of time massaging the uh, existing quarters. They're just there for reference right now, but already, um, you know, simply hacking off the remnant of the existing or the old tail panel and, and just flattening out what was there has already created a, a pretty good fit, pretty good. I mean, I haven't spent any time working it. So, uh, because I'm probably replacing the quarters. So it's just for reference and for, for reference, hey, A plus. So looking inside the trunk, see my level at the back, floor is level, trunk's in. No issue. I was able to slide the trunk in between the quarters. The quarters flex enough that it isn't an issue. Coming to the here. See everything's snug and, and fitting pretty, pretty good. So I think I'm ready to put some pilot screws through all this and then wheel it out and begin the fab work on the mini tubs and quadrilink setup. That's a V for victory. That's simple.